We often see today paintings that look chaotic, that don't seem to tell a story. This type of art actually does share a story of what many of us feel like today. I work with uh, teens and children and my experience working with them is that many people feel disorientated, disconnected, that they don't fit in, they feel lost. It's not uncommon for me to have to rush to the hospital to visit one of the children that I know who has survived a suicide attempt. The last three children I visited were 10 years old, 11 years old and 15 years old. And depression and despair is tragic. I've experienced it. And that's why I'm doing these little video clips. Talking on film and being visible to whoever wants to watch is a real stretch for me. But much more of a painful stretch is seeing uh, the suffering of others, feeling their sadness in my heart. And it makes me want to share the truth. We live in a postmodern world that rejects structure, rejects the idea that there can be a true story. Truth is subjective, relative, dependent upon my own interpretation. There's no solid reason, no solid reality, which determines who I am and what I should do. My professor, Dr. Gieschek, puts it like this. It's like being at a play and somebody sends you on stage and you don't know the script, you don't know what character you are, and you don't know the play that you're in. You're gonna get up on stage and not know what to do because you don't know the story you belong to, the story you are in. And this causes deep anxiety because inside of us, deep within us, our hearts yearn for unity and sense. And our hearts do not lie. Our hearts and history tell the truth. The true story that we all belong to is what God has revealed, has been recorded in scriptures, and proved by all of history. God creates man in his image and likeness with the ability to love, and love means choice. And we chose and we choose to do evil instead of good for our own satisfaction. Sin is the problem, and we cannot fix it on our own, but God can. God planned a rescue mission that began with the choosing of Israel and culminated in the sending of His Son to become an ultimate blessing to all nations. Fulton Sheen emphasizes that amidst the endless proofs that reveal, that prove that Jesus is who He says He is, it is significant that generations before He came, He was predicted, prophesied. He says at the time of the birth of Christ, the rabbis had gathered 456 messianic prophecies. What is the chance of one of these prophecies being fulfilled? Say it's one in a hundred. What is the chance of two of these prophecies being fulfilled? Say it would be in a thousand, one in a thousand. What is the chance of all these prophecies culminating and being fulfilled? Fulton goes, write a one write a line under it, write 84, and write 126 zeros if you have time. The chances run into the millions and the trillions. Who was ever predicted? When Buddha came, when Confucius came, when Muhammad came, they came and said, believe me. But they were never predicted. What did Christ say? Christ says, everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Dr. Shri points out, what does he say to Pilate? What does Jesus say to Pilate of why he came? For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. And how did Pilate respond? He responded with the world's question, what is truth? Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, he says many times, and yet he sent him to be crucified because, as Dr. Shri points out, for Pilate, truth is what is best for me. It's our world. There is no right or wrong. There is no reality or morality. I decide what is best for me. 
And this means then that I can do evil to other people if it's best for me. And that results in doing evil to myself. It is stage fright at its worst. Love one another as I have loved you. That is the true story. Now, I love everything about my spouse. But what I love most is that he is mercy and that he is truth. That always gives me rest. And he makes my life so simple. I want to give myself completely to everyone as he gives himself completely. Now, I can be downright horrible at it, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm learning. I don't trust in myself, I trust in Him. As St. Jose Maria Escriva said, Every day, O oh Lord, I'm less sure of myself and more sure of You. Like St. Therese said, I'm not always faithful, but I'm never discouraged. I know the story of love that I belong to. I know the goal is love. And I know where to go to receive the strength, to strive to live love to its fullest. And that is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.